Hi everyone, this is Miss Worth again, and it's time to go over another free response question. Now, I'm guessing by now you probably heard the news that the schools in the Bay Area are going to remain closed through May 1st, which I'm not happy about either because I miss seeing all of you guys. But, you know, we got to remember it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about keeping our community safe. So, wash your hands, shelter in place. Stay away from people who are immunocompromised. You know what to do. All right, so the question we're going over today was question number one of the free response section in 2014. Uh, now, this was one of the long free response questions. And if you remember the long free response questions, about 20 or 25 minutes is a good amount of time to spend on it. And I really like this question as an example because it incorporates analyzing the data table making a graph, and designing an experiment. So it gets at a lot of different things. So let's take a look at this. And you can look up student samples um, of answers to this question and the scoring rubrics, which I'll show you in a minute, um, online. And I'll try to remember to post those to the website. So question number one said, trichomes are hair-like outgrowths of the epidermis of plants that are thought to provide protection against being eaten by herbivores. Herbivores. In a certain plant species, stem trichome density is genetically determined. To investigate variation in stem trichome density within the plant species, a student counted the number of trichomes on the stems of six plants in each of three different populations. The student used the data to calculate the mean trichome density, number of hairs per square centimeter for each population. The results are provided in the table below. So when you read this, the stem of this question, there's a couple things I want you to notice. They tell you what trichomes are, so don't worry if you see something on the AP exam that you've never heard of before. They'll give you the background information you need to answer the question. They tell you trichomes are hairs on plants, and they tell you what its purpose is. It keeps them from being eaten by herbivores. Okay. Now let's take a look at the data table. When you see a data table, you should look, the first thing I want you to do is look and see what the title of the data table is and what the title of the columns are. So trichome density in three plant populations. And you've got population and it look like, looks like they looked at six different plants in each population. They calculated the mean and they gave you the standard error of the mean. Uh, again, I want to remind you that you need to understand how to apply standard error of the mean, but you don't need to know how to calculate it. Okay? I'll also look at the units. The units are in the number of trichomes uh, per centimeter squared. All right, let's get to the question. Oh, and also let's look at the trend. And if you look at the trend, it looks like the mean of population two is larger than the one for one, and the mean for population three is larger than two or one, and it looks like they all have the same standard error of the mean, which means how spread out the data is for all three populations is probably pretty similar. So let's look at this three-part question. In part A, on the axes provided, and they provided axes for you to do the graph, create an appropriately labeled graph to illustrate the sample means of the three populations to within 95% confidence. And they even tell you to make the 95% confidence interval, start at the sample mean, and go either up or down, plus or minus, two standard errors of the mean. Okay, We've done these kinds of graphs in class a couple of times, but I'm guessing you're all pretty good at that by now. Okay. Part B, based on the sample means and standard errors of the mean, identify the two populations that are most likely to have statistically significant differences in the mean stem trichome density. Justify your response. I am guessing you're going to see the word justify, you're going to see the word predict um, on the AP exam a lot. And then finally in part C, Describe the independent and dependent variables. Let's just underline those there. And a control treatment for an experiment to test the hypothesis that higher trichome density in plants is selected for in the presence of herbivores. So the hypothesis is that when you've got herbivores that eat plants, it's going to select for plants that have more trichomes. Identify an appropriate duration of the experiment. How long would you have to do the experiment? 
to ensure that natural selection is measured and predict the experimental results that would support the hypothesis. Okay, so here's what they wanted you to do. So let's look at part A on the axes of provided, create an appropriately labeled graph to illustrate the sample means of the three populations within 95% confidence intervals. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the scoring guideline for this question. Okay, so part A was worth up to three points out of ten on this question. And the three points you could have gotten, one was correctly labeling, scaling, and putting units on your graph. Okay, so you should have put population one, two, or three on the x-axis, and you should have put mean trichome density on the y-axis. Uh, you got another point for realizing that you had to use a bar graph, not a line graph. Why a bar graph? Because these are three separate populations, therefore it is discontinuous data. Kind of like if we did month of the year, that would be discontinuous data. Like how many butterflies do you see in March, April, and May? That would be a bar graph as well. You'd have one bar for March, one for April, and one for May. Okay. And then you got the third point for correctly putting your standard errors in the mean um, on each of those bars on the bar graph. Okay. Now part B was worth two points. Actually, let me back up to A for a second. The year they gave this question, if kids got points on this part of the question, they got their first two points. A lot of kids forgot to put the standard, uh, the 95% um, confidence intervals. Uh, for part B, you were supposed to identify the two populations that were the most different. And if you look at the means, you can see one and three are the most different, but and most kids were able to do that and say populations one and three are the most different. But where kids messed up was they forgot to do the justification properly. They asked you to justify it uh, using information from the standard error of the means. So on this question, a lot of kids said populations one and three were the most different because their means had the greatest difference, and that wasn't good enough. You had to say something like, for the second point, you had to see either this, that the error bars for the populations one and three do not overlap, or you could say the sample mean plus two standard error of the mean for population one is less than the sample mean minus two standard errors in the mean for population three, which is basically just another way to say that. Uh, of the kids who got this point, most put this. So we've talked a number of times in class about how uh, you can't say there's a statistically significant difference unless the error bars or the 95% confidence intervals do not overlap. Okay, so that's five of the ten points. Now the other half of the points for this question came from part C. And in part C, they asked you to describe the independent variables and dependent variables and a control treatment for an experiment to test whether uh, having herbivores would select for plants with the higher stem trichome density. Okay, so you could have described either this experiment or that experiment, okay? So an independent variable would be the presence or absence of herbivores. The dependent variable, the thing you would measure, would be the stem trichome density. If you were doing this experiment, your control would be the absence of herbivores. Now, duration. You wanted to say that you would have to do it for at least more than one generation, okay? That's because this question asked about natural selection. And for natural selection, to select things, you want to see who survives, reproduces, leaves the most offspring for the next generation. And to measure something like that or observe something like that, you need to run the experiment for more than one generation of plants. Um, a number of students that year got these three points, but then missed out this one because they were too vague in their answer. Uh, kids were putting stuff like, you would have to do it for a long time or a couple of months, which might be more than one generation, but you really had to clearly show that you had that knowledge of natural selection. And then uh, the prediction of the experimental results that would support the hypothesis would be that increased uh, trichome density relative to the control. In other words, uh, 
the group of plants that was raised in presence of the herbivore over time would have an increased number of trichomes on their stems. Okay, uh, you could have set it up more than one way, and that most students who got these points set it up this way. Okay, you could have also said that the independent variable was trichome density in presence of herbivores. Dependent variable was reproductive success or number of plants. That's a different way to measure it. Um, the control would be plants with a lower trichome density. Again, the duration would have to be more than one generation. And the, the experimental results that would uh, support your hypothesis would be the size of the population with the higher trichome density would be larger than the control. So a couple things I want to point out about this. Any time they ask you a question about an experiment, you always want to be able to give them an IV, an independent variable, a, DB, a DV, dependent variable, and a control. That's always, always, always. Oh, sorry. Control. There you go. So I'm going to pull up in my next video, I'm going to pull up some student samples. I'm going to pull up an example of a 10 and an example of a 6 to show you. All right. Be back in a few minutes.